Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report live for Thursday, May the 24th. And we have an amazing guest, uh, Mike Filardi, who's not only a tech ex- expert, his topic today is implantable microchips. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, in your shoulders, are you next? Uh, welcome to the program, Michael Velarde. Hey, thank you, Dr. Bill. Pleasure to be on with you. Now, of course, uh, you have been a former IRS agent. You're an expert also at helping people, uh, how can I say it, legally reduce their tax burden and get themselves in, back into a proper financial uh, setup as well. So if they go to your website, Mike Villardi, V-I-L-A-R-D-E, uh, sorry, D-I-E-A dot com, yes. then uh, they will uh, get an amazing uh, array of information. Tell us what uh, got you into this topic today and tell us the background of your research and what you found. Sure, a couple of things. Uh, for, and, and they could also call us, by the way. We have an 800 number. It's 888-873-8825. Okay, let me repeat uh, that slower, and I'll, uh, I'll put that on the site. 8 Yep. 873-8825. Very good. Okay. So tell us the, the topic. Okay. Uh, there's been many experts on this and many other programs on Genesis and other programs talking about implantable chips. How did you get into this research and what did you find? Okay, let me tell you how I got into it and what I found. Well, one of the things that, uh, well, first of all, I wrote a book on Bible prophecy. Very good. What's it called? uh, uh, The Time of His Coming. Oh, The Time of His Coming. So that's on your website as well if they want to purchase that. Uh, yeah, well, they could they could look it up through um, I guess uh, Amazon. And it's available through Amazon if they want to purchase it. I'm in the process of rewriting it right now, um, so I'll be coming out with an updated version soon. Uh-huh. Um, but I I studied Bible prophecy, wrote a book on the subject. Of course, in in the Bible it does mention no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast in Revelation 13. Um, and and no course, one better than an expert on IRS and, and money than yourself <laughs> to understand the implications of biometric uh, currency and the current conglomeration of the world uh, parliament, basically, you want to call it, of the G8 and the G20 nations. Right, right. And, and when I work for the government, they actually implanted these chips in our badges. They're called smart badges. So in 2007, we were all issued new, new badges with this chip technology in it. Yeah. And by the way, I, I took care of special forces and up to the, uh, they started actually chipping uh, the forces actually in their bodies that I know of uh, back in the early 80s. And in fact, before the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall, uh, I had uh, people that I took care of personally that were actually special forces on the uh, east-west German border that were chipped. And the chips that they had placed, the two primary ones for position actually on the battlefield were in the right shoulder blade and the left buttock. And uh, so they had tracker chips they could track by GPS the position so they get an idea if they're moving or if they're laying down and if they're not moving, you could worry about if they're not moving for after so many minutes, are they dead or are they just trying to stay in position? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, Well, well what, I, what I found out, I mean, for, for those that don't know, they're called RFID chips, and they stand for Radio Frequency Identification Devices. Very good. Okay. And, and, and what it is, it's a device, it's a transponder that's encased in a, in a, in a silicon glass and implanted in the, in the body of a human being. That's right. what it is. And these are much more advanced than people think. They have a reader distance that's not measured in 20 or 30 centimeters. Many of these more advanced chips now can read through 400 uh, meters uh, in order to identify you as well. Yes, yeah, they've gotten quite sophisticated. I mean, the purpose of them initially, um, the first reported experiment with these things was carried out in 1998 by a British scientist, uh, Kevin Warwick. Um, and it was, you know, they, they used the implant. It was used to open doors, switch on lights, stuff like that. Um, and matter of fact, they have that at the Science Museum in London. They kept the, the first actual chip. Uh, what happened in 2002, the Verichip Corporation, which is now known as the Positive ID Corporation since November 2009, uh, received preliminary approval from the United States FDA to market its device in the U.S. within specific guidelines. The, 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 the device received FDA approval in 2004 and was marketed under the name Verichip or Verimed. But in 2007, it was revealed that nearly identical implants had caused cancer in hundreds of laboratory animals. And as a result, that killed the stock price of the company, and it, they discontinued that particular version. Now, of course, it was picked up again in different, different, different versions along the way. Um, uh, Applied Digital Solutions, which later became the, the, the Digital Angel Corporation, 
began uh, distributing the implantable chip known as the Vero chip or very Med until the product was discontinued in the second quarter of 2010. Um, and what, what these chips do is they contain a 16-digit identification number. And the purpose of them was to put medical information, or at least they were being marketed, as a tool in the event you're in, you know, you had a, a car accident or something, they could read the chip at the hospital. They'll instantly know your blood type, um, any allergies, any medical history, so that they could treat you better. That was the purpose um, of these trips, chips when they initially came out and the way they're being marketed even today. Yeah, they're trying to market them, actually. One of the primary ways is to tie it in with the Obama seamless uh, hospital record system and emergency system so they could use a very chip or a digital angel type identifier for ambulances as EMTs and police. So yeah. if you had an accident without an ID, they could tell who you are or a plane crash. That's correct. And then they, then they could scan your records and they'd be in a central database, just a, almost like the cloud database that Obama wants to create with General Electric when they started the EMR electronic medical record. Remember, the quote, Mark of the Beast system, a very large part of it is Obamacare. People need to understand that most of what the database is is going to be your medical, your biometric, genetic, and other records uh, to justify this system, which will be a cashless biometric uh, world currency. Right. And, and matter of fact, I was going to read the, the – this is in the Obamacare bill. I'll, I'll read to your audience um, the section of the bill. It, it's under uh, Class 2, Paragraph 1, Section B. It specifically includes, in quotes, a Class 2 device that is implantable. And on page 1004, it described what the term data means in Paragraph 1, Section B. In this paragraph, the term data refers to information respecting a device described in Paragraph 1, including claims data, patient survey data, standardized analytical files that allow for the pooling and analysis of data from a disparate data environment, electronic health records, and any other data deemed appropriate by the secretary. Wow. Okay. So, um, now how this is going to work is the FDA um, has already approved, as I read before, there's, there's already FDA approval for this. Um, uh, by so, the way, they want to move to, from a chip which is external, like a tag or a medical alert. They want to put a chip in all Americans, too. Yes, this is part of the plan. That, that, that's the next thing I'm going to get into. Yeah. Um, of course, this element is the purpose of the Class two device to collect data in, me, in medical patients, such as you know claims data, survey information, all that sort of stuff. But um, here's how it's going to work. The sort of device will be implanted in the majority of people who opt to become covered by the public health care option. So with the reform of the private insurance companies who, you know, who charge outrageous rates, many people will switch their coverages to a more affordable insurance plan. And that would mean that these people that switch now will be required to get this chip. Now, wow. they also plan, I mean, the adults who, who choose to have a chip implant are the, are the lucky ones in a sense. Children who were born in the United States, who at the time of birth, and this is in here too, is not otherwise covered under acceptable coverage, will be qualified and placed into the CHIP or Children's Health Insurance Program, or what a convenient name that is, um, and they would get implanted, a, 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 uh, this implant would be implanted in them. Yeah, you basically at birth. Huh? At birth, yeah. 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 Yep. Now people and, say and they, nobody don't realize how bad Obamacare is. Obama, Obamacare basically, combined with everything else that he's done to complete all the things started with George Bush and before, yep. is literally the mark of the beast. It's a biometric yes, currency where basically they, they don't want to just get rid of the dollar. They don't want to just get rid of the penny. They want to get rid of all paper money so it's all virtual money in their digital database. And your medical records... Your fingerprints, your retinal and iris scan will be your opening code for your database that they're in total control of in virtual space. And bare naked, as they say in your birthday suit, they'll have you.
Mike Villardi, uh, remarkable analysis. And your book is going to be coming out again. By the way, I want to reannounce my books will be coming back out this fall. I'll have the book Clay and Iron I released 13 years ago with the Prophecy Club and Abortion to Armageddon. I'm going to put an e-book and health book that's going to be basically uh, Nutrimeds, bringing nutrition and medicine together, nutrigenomic wellness medicine. And it's going to cover an expansion of all the wellness protocols. It'll be an e-book. Uh, only specifically for those people who are customers of Nutramedical. No one else will be able to purchase it. And it won't be on Amazon or these other places. It'll be updated quarterly. It'll be a membership. You won't just get a book. You'll have a membership, and you'll have to continue uh, that membership payment, or you won't get any updates of the ebook. Uh, but it's going to be pretty advanced, and it'll cover what I call the wellness for dummies section. It's going to cover other areas, uh, both for doctors uh, researchers and those people really want to know what's going on because we live in such a toxic world. What you're doing now, Mike, is you're kind of detoxifying the people of toxic ideas because these progressive ideas that are infecting our politics, and we talk about this with the book Plundered America uh, with Dr. Mike Kaufman about how progressive our theology and ideology is destroying America. This is uh, satanic. I mean, the Bible says it right here. And right in Obamacare, and you mentioned it again, I'd, I'd like you to just repeat that for people who are skeptical. And it's good to be skeptical, but when you find the facts, you can't have the same opinion. Obamacare, class, you know, uh, the, uh, what is Health it Healthcare bill under yeah. class 2, paragraph 1, section B. So yeah, page, page 1004, uh, data yes. in the chip. I mean, let's just go over this to repeat for those people who thought, no, 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 I tuned into the wrong channel. That was somebody else saying this. This wasn't really happening. This is just a big <laughs> joke, isn't it? No, it's not. Obamacare literally is the mark of the beast. And it means chipping you. And if you don't think that that's the end of cash, if you think that's the end of liberty, if you think that they're not going to give you 75 vaccines, which the, quote, medical profession are being lined up to force vaccinate with you. And by the way, the doctors become the white-coated spitznots in America. And the nurses, they literally, every move you make, like this song Sting, they will... D they key it in, voice it in, it'll go into a database within picoseconds to a central database with Health and Human Services that can be accessed by Interpol when you fly into to Frankfurt, Germany, or you fly into South Korea, Seoul. Uh, that's how bad it is. It's so bad, you will not be able to buy or sell, save you have the market. Or, of course, you do bartering and other, quote, illegal activities. In fact, even using gold and silver coin, it says, some, it says in the Bible, your gold and silver shall canker. So at some point... The governments, or the administration of the world, I'd say not government, the administration of the world will say it's illegal to even barter or to buy and sell with gold and silver coins. That's why they'll say to rust or canker, because it'll be considered a crime. Yeah, that, that happened under um, FDR. Right. He outlawed gold in the United States uh, years ago. Right. And, uh, I mean, there's the way they're going to push this is they're pushing it as a medical save life-saving device um I'll, or did, I'll you, read did you say a life extinguishing device no a possible life-saving device i'll, I'll read I, you a little I, bit i'm just being article. sarcastic a life extinguishing device yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> I, I'll, I'll read a little from uh from some of the promo that's coming out about these chips so you yeah, get an yeah. idea yeah. Um, you have no doubt heard about the heartwarming stories about radio frequency identification, or RFID, microchips that reunite lost pets with their owners. These life-saving devices have been used safely for, for more than 15 years in tens of millions of dogs and cats around the world. There are now more than 70,000 scanners in animal shelters and veterinary offices, and each month more than 8,000 dogs and cats are reunited with their owners, rather than having to be euthanized as a result of this technology. Pet microchipping is globally recognized as the best way to identify lost pets. You may not know that a similar device has been cleared by the Food and Drug Administration for use in humans. It's marketed by my company, and this is the guy who's writing this article, Verichip Corporation. And it's, only, and it's not only effective and safe, supported by years of successful use in the pet world, but it can also save a patient's life in the first critical minutes of an emergency situation. I'd like to clear up some misconceptions surrounding this device. Cleared by the FDA in, in October 2004, Verichip's Veramed patient identification system consists of a radio identification microchip, or RFID, that stores a unique 16-digit number, proprietary reader, and a personal health record database. The microchip is implanted through a simple injection above the triceps area of a patient's right arm and one scan links to a secure 
personal health record database providing the patient's identification information and other relevant information the patient desires to communicate. The password protected information transmitted through an internet enabled computer gives emergency department staff rapid and, and secure access to the information they need to make better health care decisions during an emergency. And, and he, you know, that's the position they're taking, and that's how this is going to be pushed through Obamacare. Um, There's no need for it at all. You can have this in a little memory right. stick that you carry on your person. You can have it like we used exactly. to have the old medic alert. In fact, the idea of, of relying on uh, systems that might be down or might be jammed or might be even hacked into uh, is ridiculous. This is why we have identity theft, because of the craziness yeah. of the open system we have. It's not secure, and the fact is also it's open to Interpol and other intelligence agencies anywhere in the world, so they literally can hack into your biological identity. They can also place you, quote, uh, with substantial, quote, evidence that you're at the scene of a crime even though you're not even in the country. So that's how bad this is. They can use this information to try to, to put a signature and then make you guilty of something where you were not even within a 1,000 miles of the so-called place of perpetration. That's how bad it is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when I, when I was with the government, they they put them in the badges, and you know, the purpose of it was, I I, th I think the, the, what they were trying to do was, after nine eleven, um, all federal agents received uh, air marshal training. So as a result, if I would go on a flight, and me and my boss were together, or another agent, they would remove the air marshals, and we'd be the air marshals on the plane, and. You know, basically, the, the process was basically you go, you show your credentials, and the, and the cop would kind of not off on it. But, you know, a lot of police officers didn't really didn't know, if, you know, the different. there's so many different agencies. They didn't know what was legit and what wasn't. Right. So they came up with this idea. We're going to chip the badges, and what will happen is there will be scanners at the airports. When, they, when, they, when, I, when we check in, they can verify who we are with the scanner. In other words, the information will come up, you know, Special Agent Velarde is out of the, uh, you know, Manhattan Field Office, he belongs to this group, this unit, this, all that other stuff. Um, you know, good standing, the whole thing. Um, that was the intent of it, but I, I don't think they've gotten the readers to all the airports at, at this point in time, but the, the chips are in the badges. Now, could that be useful if the flight goes down and they need to find somebody? Of course. Um, the other part of it, the other, the other side of that coin is, you know, they could also know where you are 24-7 if they so desire. Now listen, if people have proper identification on themselves, and that could easily be accomplished with a little alert bracelet. They could just say your name and your birth date and or any other system for identification. Uh, this idea that you have to have this because it's going to be so cost savings, the cost I've heard to put in a biometric uh, system for all the medical records and make sure it's, quote, up to date, I mean, up to date with all the current drugs and everything else, mm. is phenomenal. It's not going to happen. It'll be also filled with incorrect and, and, and data. And once the incorrect data is entered, who's going to be able to have access to change the data, even if it's incorrect? No, that's a good point. And like you said, you could use a bracelet or something that's removable, and you could carry it with you as opposed to something that's implanted in you. Exactly. And there's no need for that at all. It's actually very dangerous. If they want to have a memory card bracelet, you simply plug in the USB into the computer and they're an ambulance. Welcome back and uh, remarkable analysis. Mike Velarde, let's continue. Um, this isn't a, uh, you know, you, you turned on and you woke up this morning and said you rubbed your eyes and had your coffee and came out and then you turned on Genesis Network and you say, my gosh, what is Deagle talking about now? He's got this guy, Mike Velarde, who's actually written this book about uh, the Bible. He's actually an IRS expert, a former agent. He knows that this is really happening. He had the RFID chip on his uh, badge. They want to put these chips in everybody and the people don't see it. And one of the things that we should be as Christians, whether you're talking to your secular friends or your so-called lukewarm later that we see in Christians is to make them realize this is not a is this is not a dry run this is the big show uh, when you see Obamacare actually and it's already passed two years ago and it's now before the Supreme Court within a month they have to rule on whether or not it's going to be deep-sixed by the way if it isn't deep-sixed we're gonna have a major major cataclysm in this country 
and I do mean cataclysm. This is going to get real ugly because of political fallout, the fights going on between the Supreme Court and the possible removal of justices from the Supreme Court if they don't steep six it. And I do really do think it will. I'd say when, when even one of the appointees of Obama, who's a, who's a very liberal person, Kagan, actually says there's no way you can do this, I think that Obamacare is toast. And I think what Obama's doing is a parting shock. is, yeah, I'm a Muslim. I've been lying to you. I'm the first gay president. So what? And I'm out of here. And uh, basically, he took his best shot as a communist, bisexual, drug-addicted, uh, Sunni Muslim, Satanist, to see if he could destroy our country and bring in the mark of the beast. And the globalists to say, dang, those Christians are still opposing us and they're still telling the truth. Yeah, well, well, I mean, they, they come across with this stuff. I mean, they, they're putting a lot of stuff out on the web. Um, I'll, I'll read you another, uh, uh, another one if you go to implantedmicrochip.com, okay? And, and here's how they, they said recently the FDA cleared the first RFID, again, what that is, is a radio frequency identification system that uses an implantable microchip for human use. When inserted, insert, inserted just under your skin, the implantable microchip, which is approximately the size of a grain of rice, is barely felt. The RFID microchip contains a unique identification number that the ERs, ambulances, and other medical personnel can scan immediately to identify and access your personal health information. Immediate yeah. retrieval of your medical information can facilitate appropriate treatment with less delay and save your life. Now, have you ever heard of the interaction? Now, I, I'll just give you a little information in my background. I have a background where I have Q-level security clearance and work for Space Command. I took care of Special Forces in the mid-90s. I worked mm. with the FBI and CDC on Operation Top-Off in Dark Winter. And I visited Building 10 in Oak Ridge, uh, Tennessee, where they actually make the, uh, the uh, what's called the, the special, if you want to call it, DNA biochips that they're actually developing with Affymetrix out of Chicago. Affymetrix was making a DNA biochip so they could take a micro drop, which is a hundredth of a drop of blood, and with a DNA endonucleases from bacterial enzymes and micro lasers, uh, they could actually, with this microchip costing less than 40 cents, determine who you are from anybody else on Earth in less than five minutes. They wow. also... Had, they also had, by the way, were testing out not just these regular chips that you saw with Digital Angel, but much more advanced ones. So what they're rolling out to the public is Generation 2 when they got Generation 9 and 10. And uh, they have much longer reader distances than you think. And I've had other people argue, say, oh, no, you can't have a reader distance that long. It's only 18 to 20 centimeters. The document that I got, and I got this back in October of 1998, was from a Lockheed Martin... Uh, contract engineer who's working with uh, Lockheed Martin and Lucent Technologies on the uh, digital uh, matrix. And I actually took care of employees for six years working on the Virtual World Project, which is centered at Schriever Air Force Base uh, in Falcon, Colorado. Of course, another new part of that system is being built at this town in northern Utah. That's a three million uh, square uh, foot facility that's above ground. The one that's the main node actually is two miles underground at the underground city at, at Falcon, Colorado, Shriver Air Force Base, which is three higher levels of security clearance than NORAD. It's the highest security clearance base on, in America. Hmm. And I walked through the actual supercomputer array of the Cray-4 uh, and the Cray-5 gallium arsenide uh, quantum computing supercomputers, an array, literally a giant array underground. I've actually physically walked through it. And they actually have made an icon of every individual in the first and second world. They've been building the database since the early 1980s. And they now have a database in everybody in the first and second world that they built up icons. That's why you see these virtual world gaming uh, things. The mm -hmm. virtual world gaming is actually the prototype for what they have much more advanced. So you ha you have an icon in cyberspace right now where they know your purchases, they know your location. If you have a Siri iPhone, that Siri iPhone is relaying your location. They also eventually want to interface it with what's called smart dust, and you've probably heard about that, where they can put smart dust in, in, literally embedded in concrete, in signs, in building doorways, in everything, even in clothing. And the smart dust actually will talk to relay systems so they can increase what's called the reader distance. So your little RFID chip, even though most of the times it would only read uh, it could be blocked by metal or other things. They're going to set up so smart dust is everywhere. Literally quadrillions of these little smart dust chips will literally talk to your chip and then relay that information back through the intelligent networks to the local relay systems that will actually relay it to the supercomputer. Uh, you've heard of that too, right? The smart dust, right? 
Yeah, but that's that's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, that's, they, they, that's, they've spent quadrillions wow. of dollars on this. They spent so much money; it's off the books. That's why with nine eleven, with Dove Zockheim, they lost two point three trillion dollars. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember one of the employees I took care of at Lockheed Martin. He says, "You know, if I need a hundred million dollar supercomputer, uh, custom made for me, uh, there's it's off the books. But if I need a box of pencils, some floppy drives." or something else, it has to be requisitions and we have to kind of prove that we need it for a specific project. So uh, people don't understand what's going on. And by the way, all of this, these, a good example is Obama's attitude at NATO, where he handed over Aegis uh, anti-aircraft systems that were just being completed, our Navy, our radar installation in Turkey, and our new uh, super predator drones are being handed over to NATO command. So it basically means that they're trying to, he's trying to turn the U.S., Congress and Senate and even the office of the presidency into a call a vestigial office. Now, you, vestigial means it's like your appendix. It's there, but it has no biological or functional uh, importance. Right, right. That's right. what he wants all, to do. Is all, all the they got, the globalists want to, yeah, they want to destroy uh, any kind of form of governance, and they want rulemaking. They don't even want law. They don't want the rule of law. They want rulemaking and administrative injustice as being the rule of the day where the faceless Maybe even artificial intelligence system determines what's going to happen, not being able to interact. Just like going on the phone, press 5 if you want this, press 2, answer this question. I don't understand that. Uh, and you'll keep on saying, you want to talk to a real person? You don't even know now if the real person is real or if they're simulated like Siri on your phone. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. And people say, crazy. no, it's not that bad. I said, look, every phone, fax, and email, not just some, every phone, fax, and email has always been analyzed by artificial intelligence. And in 2003, they launched a supercomputer AI system, the intelligence of a superior human being with access to every database of every phone network, every fax, every video, everything, YouTube, every social networking. That's why this guy that set up uh, Facebook, he's simply the face of Facebook. Uh, This is basically a, if you want to call it a globalist operation that's completely run by the one world government And the idea that Facebook is going to become the biggest corporation on earth is because they want you to buy into it so they have total control of your buying and selling and total access to you to market you the next thing you want. It's crazy. Yeah, well, we we are certainly getting into, uh, we're getting so close to the the book of Revelation happening. You know what they call Um, it? They call it a node. They call everybody in this supercomputer a node, N-O-D-E. And you had a database, what's called, it's called polydimensional database architecture. And they actually had these algorithms, and I'm I'm a mathophile. So they had these fancy polydenomical algorithms. And one of the comments made by one of the guys that was there was a senior member of their decryption system told me he worked for a company, private contracting company with a government called Signal Saturn Systems. Uh, he, he's probably still there in Colorado Springs because he worked in East West Germany and he was also would track sleepers there before the fall of the wall. And uh, what he told me is that uh, <laughs> when we come back, I'll give you more of the story, but it's, okay. it'll blow you away. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the system is set up so everybody's got a database and, on everyone and built in cyberspace. So you have a SIM sitting in their supercomputer. And every phone, fax, and email on Earth, he said, you can tell the dial tone, polygen, uh, p- uh, dial tone frequencies to the phone in your Basra from the bathroom phone to the kitchen phone. Mike Velarde. Now, why do we spend time going over this? Because within the next month, the American Supreme Court is going to make a decision on this. We have the United States on the weekend beating the G8 at the Camp David for two days. Now the NATO meeting, where basically he's passing over our military control to a NATO, which is basically a, if you want to call it an arm of the British Empire, and the British Empire basically has been reinvented in the form of the United Nations. 57 of the 183 nations in the United Nations are basically British, uh, if you want to call it, and they're all under the control of the Queen. So what we have really is the United Nations is a government where Britain has fully come, taken America back under its fold, and America thinks it's a separate sovereign nation. And now even our money is so, is so integrated with debt, uh, and that's why we need experts like yourself, because I don't believe the taxes are going to get any less, 
because they've decided, well, yes, we're going to run the printing presses until they get so hot we have to actually spray them down. Um, that's how bad it is. And so when people hear this, they think, oh, that's decades away. That's not going to happen. No, no, I, I think it's only a matter of uh, probably a matter of months to years away. And I think it'll, this is the stages I would say are going to happen. The first is we have uh, this year the technical closure of the strait, basically a partial closure, which drove the price of oil up. Now there's apparently a deal, which is good temporarily. What's happening is we're going to probably have a major release of radiation in Fukushima, which is going to collapse the European credit system. That means by the summer and by the fall, in order to resurrect it, in order to save Europe, they're going to literally create this new debt monster that's going to be a G20 backing every nation in Europe. And that means America will be, because they're saying basically, and that did on the weekend, if America doesn't back up Europe, and Greece and these nations have been spinning like drunken sailors, we're going to see the collapse of our five major banks and a bank holiday in America and a major depression. And they've set up this on purpose. And this is designed so they can bring out, hey, we got the solution. It's called the mark of the beast. What do you think, hey? What do you think of that? Is that uh, thesis reasonable? I think that's where we're going, and I think it's only a matter that uh, while the distraction of the selection, which is what we're going through, not an election, we're going to see this culminate pretty quickly. And I think this international currency will partially be gold-backed, uh, and that means that anybody, i.e. the governments of the world and the globalists that have some gold, gold will go through the ceiling in terms of its relative value, and we'll see a uh, uh, electronic funds transfer and basically no currency. You'll have literally the mark of the beast. People say, in Australia and many countries like in Britain, you cannot get a check from the federal government. You can only get electronic funds transfer to your bank account. So if you don't have a qualified bank account and identifications, you don't have any wealth. You have nothing. You can't even get a check from the government. Well, well, I, I don't think it's any coincidence that three major societies, the Mayans, the Egyptians, and the Aztecs, all picked 2012 for the world as we know it to end. <laughs> um, there, there, there are so many things that are happening this year that are so relevant. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, this guy, Malachi, who lived in the 1100s, and he had a vision of every pope that would be come into existence from that time till the time the second coming of Christ and this guy Benedict is second to last on the list the last guy on the list is a guy that's going to call himself Peter the Roman and later Peter the Great and he will cause Islam and Catholicism to come together and consolidate in fact that's where their point their ultimate is they're doing consolidation under this current Pope of the Greek Orthodox Church and even the Church of England. That's actually been a process that's been going on with Colonel Ratzinger. He's got a wonderful name, Ratzinger. Mm -hmm. I right, call him Pope right. Ratzinger, you know, rather than Benedict the Sixteenth. Right. right. <laughs> well, let's call him Ratsy. That's an even better name. Pope Ratsy. <laughs> <laughs> but the next year, if you think this guy's bad, who's what I call our Nazi Pope, wait till you see the next guy. He's going to have. Exactly. He's going to get up in the morning before he puts on his mitre, and he's going to have to polish his little horns. Exactly, because he's going to be the one, the biblical, what I believe in Revelation 13 is the false prophet. The one that will be able to call fire down from, from heaven. Well, and I, I, know, I, I, yeah, I, I know that the Pope is what I call the pastor, but I, I'll tell you, let me explain this as a marriage, because this is something I did in my book, Clay and Iron, many years ago, and I got a supernatural okay. revelation on this. And, and it makes sense, because God makes sense. Uh, the false prophet has to have a number of things that he does. Number one, he forces a mark on the whole world that everybody cannot buy or sell. Number two, he can call fire down from heaven, which means space-based weapons. And number three, basically any nation that crosses them, he can crush them. Okay? Mm -hmm. The only superpower that can do that is America. I mean, you might say Russia's got weapons and China. They're small fry, okay? The United States president, as much as he's a, uh, you know, a, the first gay president, he really is just a figurehead. The United States is capable from space, even though firing a missile, and these are advanced classified weapon systems, they can create a plasma weapon that can have a 100 megaton explosion over any city on Earth within seconds without firing a missile. They have space-based gamma weapons that are collimated gamma beams with nuclear explosions in space. We have nuclear missiles in space which violate SALT-1 and SALT-2. They can blow the sh shields and hit ground. They also have a thing called rods from God with what's called linear accelerators that can take a rod about a meter long and drive it at the ground at around 23,000 miles an hour. And when it hits, it hits with the force of a nuclear explosion. We have weapon systems that can cover an entire area with a scalar weapon to kill crops, disorient people, make them so sick or drop dead. 
Uh, and we have EMP weapons that can take on an entire continent or a city. We have weapons from space that can vaporize a building or a person. From space, we can literally read a book that you're walking around with from space. That's America. It's not any other nation. And so the mark of the beast is going to come from America. The only nation that, by the way, can ratify the rebuilding of the temple, King Darius, was given by the Sanhedrin to George Bush, and that scroll was passed on to Obama and whoever the next president is this next term, because it's very likely that the ratification of the splitting of the city to Al-Quds, which is the East Jerusalem capital of New Palestine, uh, will occur along with the access for the Jews to the Temple Mount to actually start the blood sacrifice, which has to occur on Sakat. So uh, the scroll of Bush, given by the Sanhedrin, January 2007, is researched by uh, Tex Mars, and many other things <laughs> converge that the false prophet will be, and this is a thus saith the Lord, this is not even open to even wavering, will be a U.S. president. Yes, the Vatican is the ultimate ecumenist, if you want to call it the, the head of the beast, religious systems bringing Islam and all the Abrahamic faiths and everything together from Dalai Lama to whatever kissing his ring is the Pope. Uh, and, the, and the beast dictator will be a Russian. It says, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech, Tubal, and Rosh. Rosh is arming to the teeth the strategic rocket forces of China. All the Muslim nations with him that will attack Israel are all basically Russian uh, vassals, if you want to call it, of the Russian Empire. And anybody who thinks that the Soviet Union's gone away doesn't realize, as one of my Russian friends said that was very high up, said all they did was change hats. So right. Soviet Union, when they get all mad about the strategic missile defense, the fact is if we don't have a strategic missile defense, the Russians have developed a new football and missile and many other systems to avoid our coast space-based and other weapon systems. The Russians are crazy. Uh, if America decides to just push a button, any nation on Earth without shooting one bullet will just cease to exist. That's America. Well, yeah, and what you said about Russia, there was a book written back in the 60s called New Lives for All by Anatoly Golikson, who was one of the highest level defectors. Right, so the, the beast dictator of Europe and of Asia is Russia. Anybody who thinks any, any otherwise than that, with the Russian physicists being the most advanced physicists in the modern era, mm -hmm. with their advanced weapon systems, and they have a mobile Tesla-based uh, scalar weapon system as well, like our system. They have things that are much more advanced than just the, the, the stationary harp system. Uh, and the Russians can do climate weapon effects, uh, geotectonic earthquake weapons. Uh, the Russians can do uh, plasma weapons like the Tesla because they split those scientists between, at the end of the Second World War between the German scientists going to the Soviet Union and going to America. So the fact is, Russia is, uh, they we're going to have a bipolar world with the U.S. president and the Russian le leader, and we now have Vladimir. Isn't that a wonderful sounding name, Vladimir? Yes. Vladimir he's, he's Putin. He's been there a while. Vlad, <laughs> Vlad. So it gives you a kind of a throwback to Vlad the Impaler, you know, where the troops would come into Transylvania. And that's where the uh, the story came from about, uh, about uh, you know, uh, the vampires, and he would basically have tens of thousands of people impaled on posts and steel yeah. poles. And uh, the troops came in and were so frightened by what they saw of the horror, they just turned around and said, we're not going and fighting with this guy. And guess yeah, what? Yeah. Vlad the Impaler is the ancestor of, of all of the royalty of Europe. Yeah, that was what he did. Including, our current, okay. including the queen, not our queen, but the queen in, in the... Uh, in the uh, Buckingham Palace is one of her more starred, if you call it, ancestors is Vlad. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, reality is a real kick in the head, isn't it? People say, you're making this up because you're a good sci-fi writer. I said, no, I wish. I wish it was a nightmare and somebody could pinch me and me give me a good hard kick and I'd wake up and say, oh my gosh, I'm glad that's over. It's not started. Wake up. We'll be back in a moment. Hour three coming up with Tim Alexander and our nuclear expert, Chris Harris. Wellness Hour coming up in a minute. We'll have you back soon. 